Top Trader is brought to you by Sanlam iTrade and powered by Pyrrhus, now with a new Iris trading platform. Hello everyone, welcome to Top Trader. I'm your host, Samantha Loring. Today we're coming to you from the Maloko Investment Group in Stanton. Now it's been one month of trading so far. And today, one by one, contestants will meet with the mentors who want to know exactly what they've been doing with their portfolio. I'm not worried, I just kind of don't know what to expect. Never were prepared. Some good, some bad, some ugly. It's more about having a strategy, it's just about the 15 days we've had to trade. These few of them that I find actually do stick to their strategies. Um, it was a bit choppy. And that's also been their biggest downfall. I'm not sure what to expect. The nerves are good, are getting to me though. The desire to try and catch a falling knife, great fun if you catch it, but usually you lose fingers. I know they are going to hit me pretty hard. It's difficult to explain why I should be allowed to break the rules. <laughs> Since the start of the competition, contestants were asked to submit their stock selections as well as their trading strategy to the mentors. So, let's get some feedback. This could be fun. Morning. Morning, Zahir. How are you guys doing? Sir, good, good. You're doing some very good things, but you are not allowing it to run. You are cutting the flowers and you're watering the weeds. Be yeah. careful that you don't end up in a situation like that. No, definitely. I, I mean, I have realized that. In terms of my bad stock picks, I've got a tendency to, to hang in there and hope that the stocks would recover. And Tonga being the example, in at 105, out at 112, and then back in at 115, back 20. In. I mean, two days, days later, later, I saw it going up exactly. again. I got excited and I saw 4% in one day. I said, bank it and let's get out of that. Comments about your gold positions. You've got all three of the big gold mining stocks and you um, reckon actually, that in you... and out. So okay. at the moment, I don't hold any of the gold stocks. Okay. So I bought the gold stocks, obviously, with all of this uh, instability in okay. Europe and that in anticipation of gold stocks going up. There have been some good trades for you, so well done on that. Robex and Barlow World, I'm sure I'll be drilled on that and, and I'm a bit concerned in terms of the way that I defend those decisions. Your long trades, I mean Barlow, uh, uh, Robex are not doing you good. Well, those, those aren't actually long trades. Barlow and Robex, I, I was hoping to take advantage of of, um, okay, well then of it's worse that you're not cutting your losses, yeah, which, yeah, is, which exactly. is cutting the flowers. Those, and those two are a bit, are a bit um, I, I definitely need to consider my They're a bit very ugly. Yeah. yeah. Thanks very much. Thank you. So I'd definitely be considering exit strategies in cases where, where my stocks are bleeding. And with regards to, to my overall strategy in terms of my long-term picks and my day trading, um, they seem to be happy with that. Hoitze decided to hold all three big gold stocks in his portfolio. You say that Goldfields is the best one and then you and then go and you buy sold. all three. Exactly. Goldfields is the best. I mean, if I offer you three options, one's good, one bad, one ugly, you buy the good one. You don't buy all three. Now, I'm, I'm, the reason why um, I bought all three is that you know I'm buying Goldfields because I believe that Goldfields is the best out of the three. But like I was saying, I don't want to put all the eggs in one basket. But the other two aren't performing badly is to say that you know, Goldfields is the one that's going to spearhead, in my opinion, uh, the rest of them. And I know Once that you've done your homework, you must actually um, you know, stick your head out there and say, I'm, I'm, I'm putting my head there. there. Otherwise, you're going to always end up just being average. Yeah. If you want to be a top trader, you've actually got to take the risks and you've actually got to go out there. Otherwise, it's, it's just no good. The biggest criticism I'd have of the portfolio, too much, too small a size of position. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's exactly to the gold story. Rather than instead of putting five into each of the three gold stocks, put 15 into gold fields. Top trader, head on the block. You might lose it, but you're not going to win without at least taking some risk there. My fears were actually confirmed. Now moving forward, I'll have to take what the judges have said to avoid elimination in the future. Oliver Torsen says her strategy is to buy high and sell high and keep her portfolio diversified. That was my NASPA in media, my BA10 tobacco, my SAB in berries, my Mr. Price in retailers, my Tiger brand in food producers, um, my SAB in berries. Basically, I wanted to diversify. You held on to your bulletins, though. You're now down, as of this morning's trade, over a percent. What's your exit plan there? Um, I believe it's going to come back up. My resource, the BHP Billington, has been doing very well on the market. The, the shares are going to come back up, so I'm just going to wait. So no stop-loss exit strategy beyond it will get into profit? No, I didn't do it. I wouldn't say I was surprised because I was expecting a couple of the things they said. I really feel like maybe I should have sold earlier 
which the judge pointed out. Simon and Irina were confused about Jared's strategy or lack thereof. You're going to be doing a lot of talking and we're going to be doing very little because <laughs> we actually don't know why you are doing what you're doing. Okay. So I'm trading a high risk portfolio. I think in this short period, I have to go risky, it's go big or go home. There's no point coming second. First of all, I'm a pure value investor for this competition's sake because it's a short period. I've decided high risk is needed, although managed. Um, Mete, I've been following for quite a while in my personal portfolio, and they've really been an unbelievable story of success. I mean, if you look at their history, they haven't dropped in a long time. Until um, you bought it. <laughs> that's always the case. <laughs> I got hurt hectically in the last month. The markets crashed, which is a terrible time for risky shares. Um, um, in the next month, I'm going to be watching very closely. Um, I think I will be holding on to Anglo and Bulletin. As I said, Mr. Price, results come out, they shoot up, I'm selling. I'm not holding on to them. That, yeah, that's pretty much it. As you say, that's pretty much it. Thank you. So I think I'm going to stick with the top 40 for more, but if I come near to the end of the month, I'm going to go extremely risky. I kind of traded in a share that's not really on the list of approved shares, so that's, uh, that's throwing a bit of a spanner in the works, and I'm a bit nervous now because I have to discuss that with the mentors. I have to convince them that it's okay, um, but I don't think my odds are good. I kind of, uh, you know, it's difficult to explain why I should be allowed to break the rules. <laughs> so. Not the bad news for you, but that trade of yours is not going if to If you get fly. removed from the portfolio. So. It's a pity because right. it was a good trade. It was, a good trade. It was I've got to compliment you on that. It was a good <laughs> trade, but um, I, 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 the I first like rule of the game is you've got to stick to the rules. So, you know, you can't play chess if you're outside the 64 squares on the chessboard. How do you plan on taking this forward? Are you going to actually have some uh, stop losses, some tra trading strategies around what you're doing, what you've got at the moment? Because you were trading in and out of Bulletin um, and Vodacom, you've sort of added to your position there. So you've got quite a big position in, in Vodacom. Yeah. So how do you sort of plan taking things forward? Um, as a general rule, I've sort of applied, if I reach a 10% growth, I will reassess my position. Uh, otherwise, I'm using the 2% rule for, for stop losses, which I have manual. So I've got alerts that go off for them. Uh, and uh, those sort of prices, it's, it's around about 2%. I'm a little bit more conservative than the 2% rule. I was going to say, your bulletin, you got out before the 2%. percent uh, I got out also because of the fundamentals behind okay. it. So it was going down and... No, and 2% is a guideline. You can run at 1%, yeah. you could run at 15 It's a... Uh, uh, first Rand, I'm likely to hold all the way through. My main investment in First Rand was pretty much a fundamental play. You know, they print money and I want to be a part of that. Saul came into Top Trader as a long-term investor and he's had to change his strategy to suit the game. You started out telling us that you're running a marathon, not a sprint, and then uh, there's been some day trading in between as well. Um, I think you're quite right that in terms of this competition, it probably would serve you better to focus more on the shorter term trade. And it seems to me as though you actually sell out of things way too quickly. Um, and then you actually then sell out at a loss as well. Other than the, the, the Lonman, the big loss, for example, I actually think that there were a couple of trades that could have run a bit further. My my thinking around it is, is obviously to manage the risk by if it hits a certain figure to, to be out and if not to, to try and study the share and look at the markets and where they're going. And I have still tried to keep to my, my overall strategy of keeping 50% in the bigger stocks and 25% and in the small stocks and 25% in a more risky share. I do record everything in, in my trading journal and, and put my reasons down why. I just, I'm really just trying to use this first 15 days to learn what this competition is about. Do you find that you're trading more during the afternoon because there's more opportunity then? Or? Yeah, I find sort of in the morning, uh, open first hour, maybe hour and a half, then it kind of When you go to sleep quiet. until afternoon. Everyone's on lunch, I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> and then yeah, once uh, you hop past two is often you get a lot of news released in the States, hop past two, hop past three, hop past three obviously they're opening. So um, things get a lot more hectic in the last, especially in the last hour as well, things get, yeah. What will make you sell life, life health kit? Uh, profit take. Um, they, I know they're quite a, they're very stable. I mean, they, they're one of the best performers in the last year. They, I mean, they, if you look at them, value them. They look quite expensive, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but it's something everyone needs. Everyone's going to be using it. Um, and they're up another percent this morning. Okay, that's good. I was a bit 
cautious beforehand going in, knowing Narina's there waiting for me, but uh, no, she, she was quite complimentary, which I was surprised about. The mentors were happy with Promise's strategy. The only concern Narina had was with some of the stop losses he had put in place. For example, you said that you had certain stop losses at certain levels, but then you sold sooner than that. Yeah, um, now, I suppose, for example, you went in with a 7% stop loss strategy, you sold at 4%. Um, you know, those sort of things. Why? What is your thinking you know, behind that? My thing? thinking was, I mean, I mean, initially when I even entered this competition, I said um, how I think trading is more feel, and I think the graphs and integers add to that. I mean, for me, stop loss is absolute, like, that's where, you know, that's where we cut our losses, that's where I'm, I'm done. I mean, that's worst case scenario. I don't want to hit worst case scenario before I get out. If I get a feel like I should get out before, I mean, I think I, 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 I was always looking to get back in. You know, I've even got some stop losses I'm waiting to hit so I can get back into some position. I mean, food prices, I think it was Zeta Investments. I mean, I've, it's, it's hit the, resist, the same resistance line like three times. That's why I got out of that. Like I'm looking for it to either go down again, hit a, hit a stop loss, then pump in a bunch of money, then get back in. The feedback was fairly good. I mean, they were really impressed by some of my stock choices. Everyone has a different trading style. You know, definitely. I, was, I get the feel Steve is more safe. Gary's more uh, aggressive. Hoyt is definitely more aggressive coming from his Forex back background. So he's looking to cash in on volumes. So I can sort of gauge where everyone is. I know for sure Gary's probably up ahead purely <laughs> on how many risks he's been taking. I've been, uh, you know, using my lawyer skills to sort of uh, fish for information a bit. I'm sort of playing everyone up against each other, not being entirely truthful. I mean, what, what kind of lawyer would I be? <laughs>
it's not my cup of tea. First thing that I was thinking about where our stock is going to be tomorrow at 12 um, rather than which stock is going to be away. The stock I've chosen is Netcare. They've just released results today. Uh, their results were pretty good. So, you know, could expect a bit of a bounce out of them. Immediately, I could hear the bells in my head ringing. Okay, <laughs> go, for the, go for the stock that I've been on a low trend and see if we can make a quick profit out of it. I went with Goldfields. Goldfields today has lost 4.4% of its profits. So there's a high chance of it coming back up with like 2% or 1%. That's what I think. The contestants had cast their dive and now their fates were in the hands of an unpredictable market. It's been tanking. After the break, we'll reveal who Mr. Market loves the most. That is not good news.